Hey, beautiful people of the living God, all praises to the Most High. So the Father wants me to teach woe, um, the definition of woe, and to go through the scriptures on why you're going to see woes in the earth. And the certain kind of people woes will be taking over in these last days of tribulations and why. So what is woe and why woes are coming to certain people? So, um... Here is the definition of woe. Is woes mean misery, sorrow, distress, sadness, unhappiness, heartache, heartbreak, despondency, desolation, despair, dejection, misfortune, adversary, disaster, affliction, suffering, depression, heartache, heartbreak, hardship, pain, agony, grief, um, anguish, torment, dol dolor, right? So trouble, difficulty, problem, trials, tribulation, burdens, and also says cross to bear, misfortune, setback, reverse. Okay, so failure. These are the things that mean woes. All right, so now the Father wants me to go through because in the last days it says there's going to be woes, but there are repercussions why woes are taking place on certain people. So he wants me to read them. So you understand when you see these woes taking place on certain people being judged, you understand why. So he, the reason woe, he wanted you to know the definition of woe and to identify when you're seeing these woes. All right. Woe unto Matthew 18 and 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to the man by whom the offenses come. Now, Matthew 11 and 21, woe unto Chorazin. That is a place like close to Galilee. Woe unto the Bethsaida. For it is for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. I am only going to read the scriptures God wants me to read to you. And, it, and Luke 6 and 25, he does. So I went through this with him last night. And like even right now when I'm doing this with you. So he's telling me which scriptures to read to you. All right. Luke 6 and 25. Woe unto you that are full. So God's saying woe unto you that are full. So what does woe mean? So that means people misery, sorrow, distress, sadness, and happiness, heartache, heartbreak, depression, desolation, despair, dejection, adversity, misfortune, disaster, affliction. So God is saying Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. All right. Um, Luke 10 and 13 is actually the same as like Luke 11 and 21. Woe unto Chorazin. All right. But God wanted me to say woe unto Chorazin. All right. So this one, Zephaniah 3 and 1. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. So I haven't, he did give me the understanding of woe to her that is filthy and polluted in the present city. Um, the, the women who, who don't want to repent to God and they're dressing seductive and they're doing whorelit business and they're selling their box. God said, woe unto her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. All right. Now, Revelation. No, this is not it. Um, this one. Lamentations 5 and 16. He wanted me to say to, the, to you that this happened to the children of Israel, that the crown has fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned because they sinned against God. But he's saying this is now happening unto the nations and to the children of Edom who have the children of Israel in captivity. Their crown has fallen from their head. Woe unto us for that, they, that we have sinned. So God is saying woe unto them for they have sinned against him. Now, that is what he wanted me to say with that one. Now, Habakkuk 2 and 12. Woe to him that builds a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. He wants me to say, woe to the king of Babylon. Woe to the daughter of Babylon. Woe to the children of Edom. And woe to all of the nations and the people who built their town with blood and established a city by iniquity. God says, you're going to have the woes, the misery, the despair, the troubles, the unhappiness, the desolation, all of that because of that. 
because you establish us you build a town by blood and you establish a city by iniquity now he wants me to read woe this place this one isaiah 18 and 1 woe to the land shadowing with with wings which is beyond the rivers of ethiopia so the land that is beyond the rivers of ethiopia god said woe unto that land Now, he wants me to read this one, Nahum 3 and 1. Woe to the bloody city, that's Babylon. It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departs not. So God's saying, what does woe mean? Misery, sorrow, distress, sadness, unhappiness, heartache, heartbreak, despotency, desolation, despair, dejection, depression, gloom, adversity, misfortune, disaster, affliction. So that is what God is saying unto the bloody city. Babylon. Whoa. Now he wants me to read Isaiah 5 and 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. So you people who are mighty to go drinking, you don't drink for occasion. You don't drink. You're not a social drinker. You get up to drink every day. God said, woe unto you. Because you're supposed to drink with moderation. God never said you couldn't drink, people. God said drink with moderation and don't drink to get drunk. But the people who get up every day to drink, God said, woe unto them. Because you're supposed to have a little wine for your infirmities. When they drink every day, they're not, do they're not helping their infirmities. Now, drinking has become a snare unto them. And he wants me to read this now. Okay. Um, Luke 11 and 47. Woe unto you, for you build the sculptures of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So all them people building up statues and things of prophets, God saying, woe to, unto them. For their parents, their, their, par their fathers are the ones who killed them. <laughs> okay. This one he wants me to read. Isaiah 10 and 1, Isaiah 5 and 18. Sorry, I'm just going to read them. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Amen. Okay, so God wants you to know that the unrighteous decrees are like the mandates, their evil rules and laws, their evil statutes and commandments, their evil regulations and jurisdictions. So he's saying, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness, grievousness which they have prescribed. So God's saying they're, they're the prescribers of these wickednesses and they're the one writing evil decrees against it when they're the ones who prescribe the wickedness in the first place. So God is saying, woe unto them, woe unto your governments who are the ones making unrighteous decrees. All right. Now he's saying he wants me to read Isaiah 5 and 18. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin, as it were, with a court rope, a cart rope. So the reason why God wants me to read out woes to you, because in Revelation, it says the first woe, the second woe is past. So you understand why these punishments are falling down on the people and on his creation, the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, man, woman, and child. You'll understand why these woes are taking place in Revelation. So he wants me to read the woes, how people get these woes. Now, Luke 11 and 52. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You enter not in yourselves, and them which were entering you hindered. Woe unto you when men shall speak well of you. And then he wants me to go to this scripture for that, to come for you to understand this scripture. So I was waiting to get here, actually. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets, right? Now he wants me to go to Matthew 5 and 11 for you guys to know that these people, when they speak well of you, that, that is not a good thing. He's saying, bless Matthew 5 and 11, bless are ye when men shall rival you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil, evil against you falsely for my name's sake. What does it say? It says you're blessed when men shall rival you and persecute you 
and shall say all manner evil against you falsely for my name's sake. So that's why it says, Woe unto you when men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So God wants you to know it's woe unto those people when you hear people speaking well of them and they're preaching God's word because people never spoke well about prophets and seers and men and women of God who spoke the truth. They never had a lot of followers. A lot of people didn't listen to them. A lot of people didn't like them. They listened to the soothsayers, people who soothed them and didn't make them feel bad about their sins so they can repent from them. So he wants me to read now Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Don't they speak well of your pastors? And what does God say to them? Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. So you have to understand, when you see some of your pastors getting these woes, it's because they destroyed the sheep of God's pasture. Now, he wants me to read Luke 11 and 43. Woe unto you, Pharisees. For you love the uttermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace. Now, this one, Ezekiel 13 and 3. Thus says the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Nothing. I'm only reading what God wants me to read to you. Ezekiel 24 and 9. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, woe to the bloody city. He's talking about Babylon. I will even make the pile for, for fire great. So what is that? He's talking about the bloody city, which is Babylon. He's going to make it a pile for fire great. So that's a woe. That's going to be destruction and despair. So now he wants me to read Isaiah 5 and 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And this one, Mark 11 and 17, which is also, these words are paraphrased again in Luke, in Matthew. So you, I'm not going to read those ones because it's going to go there. But woe to them that are with child and them that give suck in those days because God wants you to understand the woes. So when you see these woes, you understand why they're taking place on certain people. And you can Google where Ariel is. So God wants to, the people in Ariel to know there's woe onto this place. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Add year to year, let them kill sacrifice. Now, the children of Moab. God says, woe be unto thee, O Moab. Now, yes, amen. No, that one. All right, um, this one God wants me to read. Micah 2 and 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in their power of their hand. So people who get up doing witchcraft, doing sorcery, doing magic, casting spells, doing incantation, making evil prayer, setting snares, doing iniquity, thinking evil upon their bed, evil imagination, evil desiring, evil meditations, to practice it. God said, woe to those people. And that is what he wanted me to read. Now he wants me to read this, Matthew 23 and 14. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. He wants, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Now, Isaiah 3 and 11 Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. So God wants you to know, woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. And to the children of Zion, God wants you to know this, Amos 6 and 1, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion, and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named after the chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. God says, woe 
Isaiah 5 and 11, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine and flame them. This one too? Yes. Um, Isaiah 45 and 10. Woe unto them that says unto his father, What begets thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? That means, woe to you that says to, to your mom and your father, what child is that? What did you bring forth? What kind of children is that? It, God says destruction to you because ask him concerning his sons and his daughters. If you read that in Isaiah, you would know. Now, it, if you're, if, woe unto them that are with child and give suck in those days. If you're pregnant or if you're given milk, you have a young born and you're given suck in those these days, in these last days, God said, woe unto you. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be all these things in wo what woes mean. Misery, sorrow, distress, sadness, unhappiness, heartbreak, despair, desolation. That's why it's a woe to have a child in this time. Oh, okay. He wants me to read Isaiah 8, 28 and 1. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. So don't be overcome with wine. You can, you're can you supposed to drink in moderation. All right. Now he wants me to read Habakkuk 2 and 15. I'm only reading what God is prompting me and telling me to read to you right now. So as I'm reading, he's showing me which ones to read to you, why you're going to see these woes, right? All right, woe unto him that says, oh, sorry, I, this one first, sorry. Woe unto him that gives his neighbor strong drink, that puts thy bottle to him and makes him drunken also, that thou mayst look on their nakedness. So God is saying woe to people who give people liquor, to get them drunk so they can sleep with them so they can look on their nakedness that's what it means to that you may look on their nakedness so woe to people and woe to your neighbors who give you drink give you liquor so so you can get drunk so they can sleep with you so they can look on your nakedness god said woe to people who do that and it, this is talking about idol worship so god's saying in habakkuk 2 and 19 woe unto him that says to the wood awake and to the dumb stone arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. So God is saying, woe to them people who's be worshiping wood and stick and stone and idols and all that nonsense. Woe unto them who's be worshiping wood and stone. Now, uh, you can read, and I'm not going to go through all of these because that's not what God wants me to go through these ones. Um, with Matthew, he wants you to read Matthew chapter 23 because it talks about the woes. I'm just reading what he wants me to read to you. Now, Zephaniah 2 and 5, Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of Ketherites, the word of the Lord is against you. O Canaan, the land of the Philistine, I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. So, that is what God wants you to know. We'll be on to those inhabitants of the seacoast. And Jude 1 and 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balim for reward, and perished in gainsaying of Kor. So running in the ways of Cain is murder. Running greedily after Balim for reward is idols. To curse the good, and perish in the gainsaying of Kor. Gain sin and backbiting. So God says, Woe unto them who do that. He wants me to read Habakkuk 2 and 9, Isaiah 5 and 8, and Isaiah 3 and 9. 
So Habakkuk 2 and 9. Woe to him that covers the evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be de delivered from the power of evil. Let me read this again because a lot of people don't understand what woe to him that covets a evil covetousness to his house. People that covet for their house, people who are in secret societies and gang stalking, that they may set his nest on high, that may be delivered from the power of evil. Now Isaiah 5 and 8, Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. You know people who be sleeping from people's house to house, men who be leaving from women's house to house, women who be sleeping from hands, men's house to men's house and friend's house to friend's house, people who are not stable. Remember it says an unstable man. I mean, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So woe to him that joins house to house, was sleeping from house to house, going from house to house, field to field, that there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. So God's saying, woe unto them people who do that. He wants me to read Luke 4, 11 and 42. But woe unto you Pharisees, for you tie mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over the judgment and the love of God. They're doing witchcraft. They're doing sorcery. They're using herbs and mint and they pass over the judgment and the love of God. These are you have done. So they should have done the judgment and showed the love of God instead of tying rue and mints and doing witchcraft. These ought you have done, and not to leave off the other undone. That is God wants you to know. Woe unto them people working witchcraft, them people walking with charms, them people walking with herbs. He says, woe, desolation, distress, and destruction unto them. <laughs> now, he wants me to read Isaiah 3 and 9. The show of their continence does witness against them, and they declare their sin as Saddam. They hide it not. Woe unto our souls, for we, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. So God saying, your own sins, how, you have rewarded evil unto yourself. How do you reward evil unto yourself? Because you won't repent. That's why it says, woe unto their souls, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. What their sins, what the show of their continence does witnessed against them and they declare their sin as Saddam they hide it not it's seen and he wants me to read Isaiah 29 and 15 for secret societies and evil counsel people and people who think they can hide their wickedness from God when he sees all and he hears all woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark and they say, who sees us and who knows us? He wants you to know, woe unto you people who seek deep to hide your counsel from him. He sees you. As he wants me to read Jeremiah 22 and 13, and Amos 5 and 18, and Revelations 12 and 12, and that's it. Amen. Amen, Father. Amen. Okay, Jeremiah 22 and 13. Woe unto them, I mean, woe unto him that builds his house by unrighteousness. That is the children of Edom. That is what you call white people. They build their house on un, uh, by off, off unrighteousness, even their land. Even you people who are in secret societies and lodges, and you people who hold secrets against the righteous for reward and gang stalkers. You build your house off unrighteousness. Your wages in your pocket are off unrighteousness. That's why God said, woe unto him, woe unto you people. Woe unto him that builds his house by unrighteousness, even by coveting it, stealing, destroying, and witching, doing witchcraft and sorcery to get your house and get your gains. Yes, they do it. Yes, you people do it. You steal in the spirit. You steal in people's dreams. You steal, you, you steal phys spiritually and supernaturally and physically. You steal people's houses. You steal people's blessings. You steal people's finances, riches and wealth and spiritual talents. You do this. And you build your house by unrighteousness. And God said, woe unto you that builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong. 
that uses his neighbor's service without wages and woe unto you people who use your neighbor's service without wages. This is talking about three different kinds of people. Woe unto him that builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong and uses his neighbor's service without wages and gives him not for his work. This is talking about three to four different type of people here. And God says, woe unto all of you. Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? All you people saying, God is coming to save us. We are going to rapture. Oh, nothing is going to befall us. This is, we can't wait for God to come. God said, what desire is that day for you? What end is that for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Now, Revelations 12 and 12, this be the last. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. So, woe. Woe. Sadness, misery, sorrow, heartbreak, heartache, depression, gloom. Adversity, misfortune, despair, disaster, affliction, dolor, torment, anguish, grief, agony, pain, hardship, suffering, depression. So, God wants you to know why. Those woes, and to, you can read it in Revelations, chapter 11 and 12, where it talks about the, no, sorry, chapter 8. It talks about the woes.